Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be learning about comments, variables, and data types. So the first thing I'd like to show you are comments. Now what are comments? Well comments are something that's in pretty much every programming or markup language and what they allow you, the programmer, to do is to type in kind of like side little notes in detailing what the next block of code does, typically. And so think about it this way, you have a really long essay, maybe it's 10, 20 pages, and you just put like a little note between each paragraph detailing what the next paragraph is about to kind of help the reader, if there's someone else reading your code, that's still us, uh, in remembering what each block of code does. And that's really useful if you're writing really thick code that's a couple hundred pages. Really, really nice. So uh, in order to create a comment, all you do is type in two forward slashes. And as you can see, all the text turns green, so I'll just type out, this is a sample comment. And, well, comments are ignored by, the, by your computer during runtime, so they will not cause an error, so that's really good. Now, what if you have a really long piece of code that goes, you know, so long that you want to bring it on to the next line? Well, you could just do this on each line, right? Nah. nah. We don't have to. Instead, we can use a forward slash followed by an asterisk and then we can just you know type in whatever you know just keep going on and whatnot and also notice how the return zero in this last bracket also turned green well, that's because everything after this guy is a comment well how do we end that this comment block well in order to do this the, do the opposite an asterisk first then the forward slash and as you can see all that there is your comment all the go in between and these guys turn back to their original colors but uh, we won't use multi-line comments so much. So this is our sample comment. I'll also be using comments in uh, showing you the format for how to declare or create something uh, because it's uh, much easier to do so. Okay, so then the last things I'd like to show you are variables and data types. So let's get that over with. So uh, what are variables? Well, when we create a program, we're going to want to be able to take in information from the user, right? And we want to use it, manipulate it, whatever we'd like. So what we're going to have to do is store that in the computer's memory. And that's how we do this. We create a variable. And what that does is it reserves uh, a certain amount of memory off of your computer. And the data type specifies what type of memory. Is it going to be, you know, a decimal number? Is it going to be a whole number, a string, a single character, a Boolean? And those are pretty much the different data types I'll be showing you today. So in order to declare a variable all you have to do is type out the data type first Oops. and after that well I think I have some okay so after that and then the name of the variable that you would like to give it and I'll show you the I, I believe I know the character conventions for naming the variable so don't worry and then a semicolon of course then for initializing it you can type out name of a variable and then set it equal to a certain value. You can also declare and initialize at the same time uh, like this. And I'll show you. It's, it's very simple, don't worry. So let's say we want to create, well first I should show you some data types, shall, shall I? So let's do some data types. So first let's do some integers. And in case you don't know, integers are whole, positive, or negative numbers. So what are so, some different integers types? There's int, which is the one that we'll almost always use. There's unsigned int. I'll tell you what the unsigned means a little bit later. And I believe there's a short. So those are the integers that we'll be familiar with. We'll just be using the int. So let's create an int. Let's call it sample variable. And basically the naming conventions for uh, any variable is it can only contain, I believe, letters underscores and numbers and numbers can't be at the front they can't be at the beginning right here so bear that in mind and and it, and it with a semicolon then below it we could say sample variable is equal to let's say five then as you remember how do we print this on the screen using the C out of course so we already learned how to type out a string we could say something like output colon space and we could also tack on our variable. So we could just type out sample variable. So all that will be printed is output colon a space 
and then uh, whatever sample variable is equal to. So let's try running this again with uh, control F5. And there it is, output 5. And I'd like to have that go on to the next line. So let's try uh, declaring and initializing at the same time. So I'll just go equals, let's go 12.7. Or that's a 1.7, there you go. Let's check that out. Wait a minute. 12.7, Well, this isn't right. I didn't type, I didn't put down 12. I put 12.7. So why is this? Why is it coming out as 12? Well, the reason is because we declared this as an integer. And integers are strictly whole numbers, either positive or negative. So, as you can see here, 12.7, it doesn't round. And because of this, while it's storing the information, it only, once it runs into this little dot here, it stops. So it doesn't even know what the tenths place is. So it doesn't know to round up in the, in the event this occurs. So bear that in mind. So what's a, uh, another type of data type we can deal with? Well, another one are floating types. Uh, the one, again, I'll put the, I'll put the ones that we'll commonly use at the, at the beginning. So the one we'll typically use are doubles. But some other ones include long double and, well, float. So let's, and floating types, the only difference between floating and, I shouldn't have types there, there we go. The only difference between a floating number and an integer is that floatings do support decimals. So if I change this here to a double, let's see what the output is. 12.7, and as you can see, it's still the same. So that's really, really cool. So this is really, really cool. Now, now we're taking in some information and using it. So let's uh, let me quickly show you some more data types here. We have strings, and well, the only one is basically string, and you use double quotes when uh, putting in your string. And we also have char, which is short for character and only a single character can go in. So for strings, you can have a whole bunch of stuff. For characters, it, you use single quote, whoops, single quotes or apostrophes, and you just put like a simple letter in there, and that's all you can put in for characters. And the last one I'd like to show you is our uh, Boolean values, in which you just use bool. And that's, well, true or false, really. True, false. So that's pretty much how they work. So let's change this to a string. And as you'll see right away, we have an error. Well, we need to make this a string, shall we? So let's type in, hello world. Is that going to work? Well, we got some errors here. We made this a string. It doesn't glow blue. So is it a keyword? Well, it is but not in the IO string class. Now this is going to be really weird. When you're dealing with strings, we're going to have to import a whole other class. So, in order to do this, you have to use the pound sign again and include, and don't worry, this is a pretty easy one to remember. Of course, I have to spell it right. String. There we go. Now you might be wondering, okay, so now all of our errors are gone, so now we can print out string. So let's first look at that. Outputs hello world. Now you might be wondering, well, so we're going to be using strings a lot, but why why isn't string like all the other data types? Why isn't in, in why isn't it in like IO stream like all the others just, you know, or in the namespace? Why isn't it in there automatically? Well, the reason is because the more classes you import, uh, the more memory you're automatically reserving uh, for your application. The bigger, it's going to be a bigger file size because you're importing a whole other library. So that's why they don't do it because you might not always be using strings. You might just be using, I mean you can make strings just standard as we did like in the last tutorial just like this, but if you're actually going to be reserving in a string variable then you need to import the string. So if you're only working with numbers or strings that you know you're just going to be typing out itself and you're not going to be putting it in memory, then you don't have to worry about this. But if you are going to be using the string data type, then you need to use the you need to import the string class. So 
that's uh, all with that. So just remember strings. Got to import that guy. The next one I would like to show you is char. So char is a keyword, as you can see. And, well, we got a little error here. Uh, chars can only be one character, so you just put H in there, right? Problem solved. We still have an error. That's because these guys use the single quotes, like that. There we go. So if I go control F5 again, there's our H. So it can be lowercase or capital. Then the last one I have to show you is Boolean, so that's just bool. So let's see how this comes out. This might be interesting. We type in like true or something. Let's see what happens. So if I click save all, then run this. We get one. Now why is that? Well in memory, uh, true and false are read as either zero or one. One is, as we can see, is true. So false must be a null value, which is zero. So that's really, really cool. So these are pretty much the standard data types I wanted to show you. We'll, we will be using int and double a lot. We'll use string quite a bit. Char, we, we will be using it for maybe a, an example or two. And Boolean is a kind of a behind the scenes. We, we most likely won't really be using it for a data type, but there will be the occasion which we may. So I want you to bear that in mind. So actually, you know what? There's one more thing I'd like to show you, and that's how to get the information from the user, because we still have plenty of time left anyways. So how do you get information from the user? So what if we have something that says here like, please type in a number. Something like that, a colon and a space. And right after that, we would like the user to type in a, whoops, a number. So how do we go about doing that? So let's create an integer up here. Let's call it int input. We could call it something like that. And there we go. We just declared input. We didn't give it a value yet. We want the user to give it the value. Well, in order to do this, instead of using the C out, we're going to use the C in. And this time, our little uh, hairpin operands will now go in the reverse direction. They're now going to point to the right. So they're going to point towards the variable. So you type in input. And the reason why I didn't put an end the line right here is because I want the user to type it in right next to the string instead of down to the next line. Just so it looks nice. And then we can have a C out again. Let's throw an extra N line followed by a string that says you typed in colon and then input and another N line and that's all. So it'll so after we type in our number right here, it'll automatically go into the next line because we have this N line here. Uh, the C out should automatically bring it on to the next line, and then this should bring it down an extra line, so we should have a space so it looks nicer. Then it should say you typed in, and then wherever we typed into input, the C in, and then another N line. So let's ha see how that works. So please type in a number, and let's type in 5.8, and click enter. You typed in 5. So as you can see, when you use the C out, it'll automatically bring it on to the next line. And then we use the N line to actually throw in another N line. So it went down two lines. So we have a space now, so it looks nicer. So you typed in 5. Well, we didn't, but the reason why I couldn't read 5.8 is because we assigned it to an integer instead. And remember, you can do this for all these different data types, whatever you would like. And uh, that's about it. all I wanted to show you for this tutorial. So I hope, for, I, I hope it was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.